Hi guys, I'm here again guys, touching on OSAS again. Once saved, always saved again. Because since I've done my video, <laughs> get off that OSAS crack, I have been getting a lot of feedback. Feedback is fine. No one is being insulting. But I'm gonna say again, well, some are, but most are not. I'm being told I'm taking the scriptures out of context. I'm being told they're sending me all have sin and come short of the glory of God. <laughs> but they're not showing scripture that says, be holy as I am holy. They're not showing scripture that says, if your hand caused you to sin, cut it off. Because it's better that a part of you is cast into hell than your whole body. There's, they're not sharing scripture that says, nothing unclean shall enter in. They're not sharing the scripture that says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we are in him and walk in darkness, we are none of his. They're not looking at the scripture that says that the, that describes the works of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5. If you walk in the works of the flesh, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. It talks about sexual sin. It talks about lying. It talks about whoremongering and there's so many things there they're not talking about in the very last book of the bible in revelation where jesus says all liars and all idolaters and all sorcerers and those who practice a lie and live a lie and enjoy a lie shall not enter in the Bible says he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. Who is righteous, let him be righteous still. Who is holy, let him be holy still. Who is filthy, let him be filthy still. Behold, my reward is with me to give everyone according to his works. What is there? Why do people want to resist holiness and righteousness? Yes, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is why God sent his son Jesus on the cross, who became the ultimate sacrifice. He was going to die one time and he was going to die for all. The old sash crew want to say he died once and for all, like all our sins and that's it. No, he died one time. Because back in the days when they will do their sacrifices, they had to bring animals. And every time they sinned, they had to bring an animal, a new one. They will stand at the doorway of the tabernacle. The person will confess their sins, putting their hand on the top of the head of whatever animal they are brought. They will slay the animal in the doorway. The priest will then collect the blood as it spilled into the bowls. They will then sprinkle the blood around the altar, touching the horns of the altar. They will take the body of that animal that's been brought. They will lay it out in strategic places on the altar, burn it before the Lord. This was a whole sacrifice. Then they'll take the ashes, put it outside the camp or whatever they had to do with a sin offering. Every time a person sinned, they had to bring that, whether it was a ram, whether it was a bull, whatever it was, whether it was a turtle dove, they had to do this. They had to bring an epa of barley and oil. And if we kept up, there'll be no animals on this planet. So what God did, he sent his son who was going to be sacrificed one time. His blood was shed because you don't need any more blood after his is shed. He died for all because those sacrifices in those days were not for, let's say, a Gentile. A Gentile could not enter into the tabernacle and bring anything. Those were for the children of Israel. Jesus died for all. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever, whosoever will may come. So he died one time and he died for all. And in Colossians 2, it tells you, it gives us power over sins. He made an open spectacle of the powers of darkness. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so shame on anybody who wants to sit here and be uh, an advocate for sin. You don't have to. Are you saying that God does not have the power? They love to say this. 
So are you saying that his sacrifice on the cross wasn't enough for our sin? No, I'm saying his sacrifice on the cross was not only enough for our sins, but enough to make you stop doing what you're doing. Are you saying that God's sacrifice on the cross is not powerful enough to stop you from lying? Are you saying God's sacrifice and his blood shed is not enough to stop you from stealing, to stop you from sleeping around, to stop you from being abusive and hateful? Why do you want to sin so badly? Why do these people want to sin so badly? Ask yourself that question. Why are you so thirsty to keep doing wrong? Why are these messages irritating you guys so much? Because sin is your precious. You want to do it. You love your sin more than God. You love your ways. You love darkness more than God. Why wouldn't you want to do right by God? He died to give us the power to do it, not in our own will, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you saying the Holy Spirit is not strong enough to keep you, to keep your pants zipped up, to keep your dress down? To help you to forgive the person that you have such bitterness and animosity against? You're saying the Holy Ghost is too weak to do that? Get out of your flesh, guys, whoever this applies to. You want to sin so bad. You want to see scripture a certain way. When you are in sin, when you read the scripture, your heart is darkened. So you see what you want. God does not accept sinners into his kingdom. We are all, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are not perfect. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But if we are willing to submit and obey God. He has a power to transform you to stop those little nasty habits. We are not perfect, but as we continue to press forward in a determination that we want him as God in our lives and obey him. When he said, get off the phone, when he tells you not to do certain things, when he tells you get off pornography, when he tells you throw out those sex toys, because God will speak to you individually about what's going on. There are things he knows you're not strong enough yet. And other things he's going to help you. Ultimately, he's here to guide us and to lead us. And that's why the Lord tells us to take his yoke upon us and learn from him. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light, meaning is light, meaning whatever seems impossible for you and me to do for with him and following him and learning from him, we will find that we will be able to overcome those things that once burdened us. Those things that we once found difficult, it will be easy for us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Holy Spirit that Jesus was able to endure the cross. He wasn't able to endure the beatings. It was through the power of the Holy Spirit that he was able to continue to go about his father's business despite resistance, despite being teased and, and disrespected, despite the pain of crucifixion. He got on there. Oh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three different times that he was like, Lord, if it's possible, let this pass from me because he felt like we would feel. But you know what? Not my will. But your be, yours be done. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he's able to do the impossible. And people that want to argue sin, shame on you. Why you don't want to do right by God? Ask yourself that question. Why would you search scripture to justify your sins? Cut that out and change. You can do all things through Christ. Are you literally trying to say that God has no problems with sin? It's just that we need to accept him and still sin? Have you lost your mind? God hates sin. Read your Bible page by page. You will have no doubt how he feels about sin. You choose what you want to do. You live how you want to live. But the bottom line is people that want to defend sin are in it. 
and they want to slack off and they're lazy. They don't want to fast. They don't want to pray. They don't want to stop. And they still think they're going to enter into heaven. Imagine being in a relationship with somebody who they just know you love them. And I just want to live however I want to live. Would you just be in a marriage with somebody just doing whatever they want to do? They can cheat on you and everything because they know that you got, you made a vow to love them forever. Or you promised to be a good friend. So I'm going to take advantage of you because you promised to be a good friend. You guys will be thinking all kinds of things about this person. So why do you think that you can go before God this way? Get out of your yourself. You will not enter into the kingdom of God as is. If you do not yield to him and allow him to remove those things from you, when you deliberately and habitually sin on purpose, you know, you could sin and you realize you're wrong. You're like, man, I really want to stop doing this. But when you walk in confidence, I see God's covered all my sins and you just want to be that way. You're a selfish person. You think you could scam God and just enter in. I'm going to do what I want to do. Ask yourself why you want to do that. Are you saying God cannot change you? Since when is God and cannot in the same sentence even go? He can't change you. Demons submit to him. You mean to tell me that demons submit to Christ, submit to the name of God. They have to flee. You can't stop. You mean demons are more submissive to God than you? Go ahead and write some more foolishness. But the bottom line is, ask yourself why it's so important to you that you want to be an advocate and you want to be a voice for sin. I'm not saying that no one can ever make a mistake and no one can ever just mess up. We all have and we still do. But the more you yield to God, the less you will do. You'll find yourself not doing those things because God's transforming power will take all those things out of your heart. Anyone who is advocating for sin, stop going and reading these cherry picking scriptures that you have twisted with your dark and sinful minds and read the whole thing in its full context. There's nothing in the word that says that God saved us so we can continue to sin freely. It's not there. But for sure, there's scripture that tells us sinners will be condemned and God is no, has no partiality. He did not say with the exception of those who sin, but they're saved by my grace so they can sin and still enter in. Don't you realize for the sake of your eternity that if you want to believe that, you better see that in black and white and not a scripture that you will turn around and try to turn it just like the serpent did. Took the word of God and twisted it and Eve lost all she had, her and Adam. And you're going to lose eternal life. You will be in eternal darkness. Keep believing that you can sin against a holy God and enter into heaven. You believe in that is a condition of your spirit. When your body dies, if you are a, a sexual deviant and you like to sleep around, that's a condition of your soul. So when your body dies, your body is just a vehicle for your soul. So when the body goes back into the grave, you are still standing before God as a soul. That's a sexual deviant. You cannot enter into heaven like that. So if you're going to be a sinner, go ahead and do that. But don't think you can have holiness and unrighteousness and deliberately live how you want to live and still enter in. It ain't going to happen. Period. 